welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is November 10th, 1956, and the title is Probate Bob. Gunsmoke, brought to you by l and the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke l and Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Make me so mad. I like to think about ain't got a lick of sense in his head. Honest me, truth. Honest. I, I, I swear two good as Mr. Dillon, they times a man's got to choke his words right back down in his craw to keep him starting up a rucus. Oh, what's the trouble, Chester? What? The, there's a fellow over at the Dodge house, a, a traveling drummer out of Baltimore, and you know what he said? No, what he said. He said they got a railroad train over there in England somewhere that goes 150 miles in three hours flat. Oh, is that so? He said they'll have trains like that here one of these days going clean across the country. In 30 or 40 years, according to him, a man can get on one in New York City and get off a week later in San Francisco. You don't say. Well, now, you don't believe that, do you, Mr. Dillon? Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, Chester. Well, I don't believe it. A human body just ain't built to go that fast. It'd get a man's innards all out of whack, choke him to death trying to breathe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. The good Lord wanted a man to go 50 miles an hour. He'd have he... put wheels on him. Well, yeah. Good morning, Matt. Hello, Chester. Oh, come on in, Doc. Oh, my, i just been at the livery stable, Matt. Well, what's the matter? Is Moss sick? No, it's old Crowbait Bob. Moss Grimmick's been letting him sleep in the hayloft in return for helping with the chores. Yeah, I heard he has. Well, old Crowbait took sick in the night sometime. He couldn't get up this morning. Well, what's wrong with him? Yeah, nothing that 30 years off his age wouldn't cure. And a thousand or so less bottles of rotten gut whiskey. Well, if he's sick, we ought to get him out of that hayloft. Well, but I can't figure any place to move him. He wants to see you, Matt, right away. See me? What for? Well, I wouldn't say. But he claims it's mighty important. It's something he wants to do before he dies. Before he dies? Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to make him comfortable, Matt. That's all I can do. I'm concerned, Marshal. You're the only man in Dodge City that's worth a hoot and a holler. Except Moss Grimmick. Why, but for him and... Uh, Marshal, I'm a goddamn liar. Oh, what do you mean, Bob? Oh, there's lots of nice folks here. Of course there is. I reckon the only ones I'm really talking about is that high flute niece of mine and that sneaky old husband of hers. You know, I was uh, wondering, Bob, if uh, maybe we ought to let Ruth and Elbin know about your being sick this No, time. sir, no, no. Let them know nothing. 
Let him sit out there in the precious ranch and rot. Ain't shows me no care for years. Yeah. Well, uh, it's up to you, I guess. Hey, Marshal, the reason I sent for you is because uh, I want to make my will. Make a will? Oh, I know, I know. It don't seem likely or worth a soul coot like me and have a reason to, but that's where you're wrong. Well, Bob, I, I'll do whatever I can, you know that. Well, I only got one thing to leave. And see, it's here. Yes, it's right here in this here leather box. Why don't you take care of it for me, Marshal? See, that it ain't open till after I'm gone. Ah, Bob, that'll probably be years from now. Oh, no, no, you don't know. Doc's trying to fool me, too, but I know where I stand. All right, Bob, I'll take care of it for you. Look, uh, Doc's gone after a rig, and we're going to move you over to the jail, huh? At least you'll be warm there, and there'll be somebody with you. And I'll, uh, write up a will of some kind, and oh. you can sign it. Yeah, I'm much obliged to you, Marshal. That there box is mighty valuable. I want to be sure the right party gets it. Sure. Uh, what does it go to, Bob? He goes to Miss Kitty. What? Kitty Russell? Yep. Yeah, she's a fine girl, Marshal. Just a gold-earned angel, that's what she is. Just a gold-earned angel. of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an l and Today, all over the country, more people are changing to l and than to any other cigarette. And it's all because only l and gives you full experience. Exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. So free up. Freshen up your taste. Live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke at L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Hello, Kitty. Ah, how does it feel to be an heiress? Oh, stop it. That's all I've been hearing for the last three hours. <laughs> How's the old man, Matt? Uh, we got him moved over to the jail, Kitty. Fixed up a cell for him. And uh, Chester's staying there this evening to look after him. Must be terrible to know you're dying. Be all alone like that with nobody of your own. Yeah. I, uh... I asked him about sending for his niece, Ruth Gudler, and her husband, but uh, he was dead set against that. And I don't blame him. Not the way they've treated him. Yeah. It seems like they might have done something for him. They could have found a place for him out there in the ranch. So he drank too much. Maybe he had a reason to drink. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he is worthless. But he never meant any harm to anyone. Ah. Crowbait's all right. I, uh, I didn't know that you and him were so thick, though. I treated him like a human being, that's all. Ah. Uh, good evening, Mac. Kitty. Hello, Doc. <laughs> well, Kitty, I hear you're about to inherit a million dollars. <laughs> that's foolishness, Doc. <laughs> Old Bob never had two quarters to rub together. Uh, never can tell now. Well, at least you get it, Kitty, whatever it is. I wish he hadn't done it, Matt. I didn't expect any payment. Payment for what? 
Nothing. Again. Mac, you mean you didn't know? Didn't know what, Doc? Doc, you keep quiet Where now. do you think Crowbait's been getting his meals? I suppose Moss at the livery stable was feeding him. Moss has been letting him sleep there is all. Doc, if you don't... Why, have... Kitty's been feeding him for the last two years. Kitty, is this true? All right. <coughs> what of it? They waste enough food here in the long branch to feed ten men like him. Didn't cost me anything. It was just... Oh, come on, let's have a drink. How's it going, Chester? Fine, Mr. Dillon. We got visitors. No. Oh, uh, good evening, Miss Cuddler. Alvin. What brings you people into town? You know dang well what brings this, Marshal. Poor Uncle Robert laying back there sick to his death, maybe. And this upstart saying we can't see him. Yeah. Upstart? Well, I'll be Now, just if take I'm it easy, Chester. Take it easy. Poor old Uncle Robert. Uh, would that be crowbait Bob by any chance? Marshal, now you're insulting a dear relative of my wife. What a thing to call Uncle Robert. Why, we had no idea he was took down and ailing this way. No, I don't suppose you did, since you haven't spoken to him in the last five years. Well, that was just a family misunderstanding, Marshal. When one's own kin is took bad sick, a body'd be mighty heartless if they didn't let bygones be bygones. Yeah, sure. Well, I even brung him some nice chicken broth and baked him an egg custard pie. That's real thoughtful of you, Miss Gutter. You must have heard the rumors. Rumors? About him turning out to be wealthy. Why, we haven't that heard That dance thing, hall but... girl ain't getting one cent, Marshal. No, sir. We'll take her to court. Why don't you do that, Elvin, if you know some way of beating a legal will? Well, he was out of his mind. Doc and I'll say different. We demand to see him. Right this minute. I'm sorry. He left orders against it. Well, then take that food back to him and tell him who brung it. That'll change his mind. All right. Chester. Yes, sir? Take this back to the cell, will you? All right. He's asleep for a little while. Well, if he's asleep, just leave it. All right, sir. You be sure and tell him we brung it. Oh, I'll hire a brass band and tell the whole country. Now, Marshal, you know that's a terrible thing. A woman like that to undermine a, a, a man's feelings for his own kin. Look, Elbin, if you want to do something for him, why don't you pay off some of his bills around town? Pay off his bills? That's right. Ten or fifteen dollars to Moss Grimmick, twenty or so to Wilbur Jonas at the general store. Why don't he pay him himself if he's got now, all Now, wait that a minute, money. Ruth. You might just make him stop and think twice if we was to pay him off. Pay out good money on bills, that worthless oh, old Oh, shut up, man. Ruth. All righty, Marshal. We won't bother you no longer. We'll be going now. Elvin, what are you Come on, about? Ruth. Good night, Marshal. Mr. Dillon. Huh? What's wrong, Chester? You better find Doc in a hurry, Mr. Dillon. That old man don't look too good. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Freshen up your taste. Smoke and L&M. Why are more people changing to L&M than to any other cigarette? Because only L&M lets you enjoy full, exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. So free up. Freshen up your taste. Get full, exciting flavor. Live modern. Smoke L&M. 
Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Mighty good pie, Mr. Dillon. Even if old Miss Guttler did bake it. Yeah, it looks real good, Chester. Makes a man feel kind of funny eating it, though. No? Well, I reckon old Colbate wouldn't want to go to waste. No, I don't think he would. Mm. I wonder what is in that box, Mr. Dillon. I don't know. But we'll find out as soon as Kitty comes over. Died in his sleep, Doc said. Peaceful as anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if you really ain't going to eat that last peach pie... I Orton... haven't eaten any of it, Chester. Well, why don't you finish it? Huh? Yeah, he had Orton to go away start it. No. Mm. Oh, oh, Kitty. Kitty, come on in. Doc told me, Matt. I'm real sorry. Yeah, I know, Kitty. Oh, fella. Well, I hope he had a good life somewhere back along the line. His last years sure weren't very happy. Uh, well, here's a box, Kitty. It's all yours. I wish you hadn't done it, Matt. Why not? Oh, I don't know. It looks like I did things for him just because I expected something. I just felt sorry for him, that's all. Well, I wouldn't count any chickens ahead of time. I don't even you. care what's in it. It's just that I... Marshal. Oh, come in, Elvin. Marshal, you tricked us. All that good hard cash paid out for You folks nothing. acquainted with Miss Kitty Russell here? Huh. I know who they are, Matt. Yeah. How do you figure I tricked you, Elvin? How do I... Well, them bills are his. I paid out $86.40 in that old soak before I run into Doc, found out he died. And him without even knowing what we'd done for him. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, mighty fine talk for you, doing his kin out of what's rightfully there. Oh, you beady eyed old goat. Why are you little girl? All you can do is whine. All right, settle down. So you think I tricked you, huh, Alvin? Well, you don't think I'd have paid them bills if I knowed he was that far gone. I thought I was giving you a chance to do something decent for once in your life. We ain't responsible for his death. No, not legally. Well, now he's not. gone and died. He left all his wealth to this here... this here woman. The way I hear, that box is full of diamonds and emeralds. Whatever it's full of, it belongs to Kitty, so you may as well forget it. Forget it? When a fortune that's rightfully owned is laying right there on that table and about to slip through our fingers... You get your hands up, Marshal. You too, Chester. Alvin. Alvin, that was a real foolish move you just made. You know. Now you hand over the gun. Stay back, Marshal. I'll, I'll shoot. Alvin, I said hand over the no. gun. Marshal, so help me if you take <laughs> one more thrust. Oh, you hit him. You hit Alvin. All right, drag him back and lock him up, Chester. Yes, Mr. Dillon. All right, come on. You're locking up, Alvin. Assault with a deadly weapon. Judge Bentle figure it's worth about a hundred dollars in good hard cash, Miss Cutler. And court's at ten in the morning if you want to be there. But what'll I do tonight? Why don't you get yourself a room over at the Dodge House and meditate on your sins? My sins. Good night, Miss Cutler. Oh. Well. Now, I suppose uh, you want to take a look at your diamonds and emeralds, huh, Kitty? Can't we just burn it, Matt? Not even open it? Uh, Crowbait wouldn't have wanted you to do that. Yeah, I know. But... Anyhow, you got too much curiosity to do something like that, and you know it. Well, you win, Matt. Okay, let's see now. Yeah, I guess if we break the seal on the catch. There we go. 
map. It's full of banknotes. Yeah. Confederate banknotes, Kitty. Well, what do you know? You suppose he thought they might fight the war over again someday, Matt? Uh, maybe. Now, wait a minute. There's something underneath it. Oh, what is it, Matt? It's an Army medal. Bravery in action. Field citation. Awarded to Lieutenant Robert Danford Conroy. So that was his name. For conspicuous heroism during the storming of Chapultepec Heights, September 13, 1847. Signed, General Winfield Scott, Commander-in-Chief, United States Expeditionary Forces in Mexico. Here's a silver dollar, Matt. Uh-huh. Well, at least that's worth something. Oh, look. It's a ribbon. Silk hair bow. Tied to a curl. Lock of hair. Matt, I wonder who she was. Well, whoever, it was a long time ago. Metal, a curl, dollar, a box full of worthless paper. Story of a man's life, Matt. Yeah. And there have been worse stories. Well, I'll keep the curl and the metal. And you know something? What? We'll spend the dollar on a drink. All right, Kitty, I think I'd have pleased him. Come on. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Every year in America... Property losses through fire amount to around $800 million. And 90% of these fires are caused by human carelessness. We put a match to $720 million bills every 12 months unnecessarily. Every 20 seconds, fire breaks out somewhere in the United States. Three fires will start while this announcement is being read. The cost in human life is even more shocking than the property losses. 11,000 people die every year in fires and thousands more are severely burned and disfigured for life. These losses do not have to continue. Each of us can protect his home from fire by following these simple safety rules. Don't smoke in bed. Clean out flammable debris and have it carted away. Repair or replace worn and defective electrical equipment. Use cleaning fluids that won't burn. In other words, don't give fire a place to start. This has been a CBS Radio public service announcement. Hello, this is Bill Conrad, dropping the role of Matt Dillon for a moment to remind you to cast your vote next Tuesday in one of the most important elections of our time. After you've voted, don't forget CBS Radio is going to be reporting to you over this station the election story with the most comprehensive coverage in broadcasting history. Be with us next Tuesday, won't you? After you've voted. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.